Let's around. talk about Hammerson now, which is a pan-European retail REIT. Now, that's a retail uh, re real estate, real invest estate investment, investment trust. trust. Thank but you. focused on retail. Thank you for the cash. Yes. yes. Real estate investment trust focused on retail. We've got a, a pound. Uh, this is the portfolio of about nine billion pounds yep. and uh, high quality retail assets comprising 40 shopping centers. That's big. Mm -hmm. Retail parks as well as 15. Pre what's a premium outlet? I don't know, a premium outlet, probably some sort of uh, Apple store or a flagship store for Next or Nike and that kind of thing. Because this one is rather similar to Into, which we're quite familiar with. So we're talking about flagship retail properties in the United Kingdom, like the super mega regional ones, as well as the sort of slightly smaller stores. Market in the cap here is 72.3 billion rand, a historic yield of 2.4%, so significantly below that of growth point which is sitting above the seven percent if i can uh, just tell you what that chart is you're looking at that's a google finance chart so that's the london listing of hammerson with a code hmso which has been around for a long time that's the five-year chart but more recently this one did an inward listed into south africa offering its stock to south africans and nick can explain to us what that means what percentage of the shareholder base would you estimate is now held by South Africans? Well, the last time uh, the CEO spoke about that, he said about 13%. That wow. was late last year. So it's 13% uh, South Africans. Yeah, 13% yeah. South Africans. That's probably one of the reasons why they listed here. You know, the thing of South Africans trying to get offshore exposure directly is we need to use our um, you know, allowance or we need to do a swap it's called, it gets a little bit difficult, but if you can buy the entity in an inward listing in South Africa, um, you know, the agencies view it as a, a local investment, so you can go as high as you want. So say I'm Coronation and I want to go out and I want to buy 3% of Hammerson, not a huge amount in percentage terms, but it's a 72 billion Rand market cap. It's a lot of money. I can't just shift that money offshore, but I can buy it locally. Mm -hmm. So it was in, in in essence to just uh, you know please these South African shareholders essentially and get more interest in it. Look, yes, it's an cool. old well-established London based property developer what they've specialized in is going into somewhat dilapidated city centers like Birmingham and Bristol and places like that and acquiring properties and turning them into mega shopping centers with you know food courts and all of the top flagship stores of the global retailers you know, these are the churches of the modern society. This is where people go on the weekends in order to watch movies and to window shop and to eat hamburgers and pizza. What and about the, the European Brilliant. context? Now, the UK context, the, the Brexit element. Very good question. Yeah, good, that's, yeah. That, is, that is something that's been concerning a lot of South African investors and obviously uh, the UK investors. So Hammerson's, uh, you know, 60% UK. It's 40% uh, mainland Europe. So it's not just the UK. It's also Ireland. It's also parts of France and France. so on. So that helps. There's a bit of a hedge element there. Um, the other important thing, it's, it's top, top quality. I mean, we're not talking about your average little shopping centers or retail strip mall. It's right there at the top and there's another defensive quality for that, that location, as well. location, location, location. Absolutely. Element that you know, so yes, Brexit's got, it's happened. I mean, she signed it off, mm. Theresa May. It's going to be two years of hardcore negotiations. Um, yes, the UK economy will still struggle somewhat, but you can't just write off that property and the location that it is in, you know. And frankly, you know, listening to the CEO again, he was saying that they haven't experienced any major downturn in uh, the footfall. They haven't experienced any issues with any of their stores closing down. They have really good renegotiation negotiation deals at much higher levels and what I mean by much higher we need to understand that the inflation rate in the UK is incredibly low so if you can you know secure an increase of three percent from your tenant that's incredibly good understanding the inflation rate of I think it's about one percent at the moment so Hammerson actually I think can survive this it's the sentiment towards it at the moment that is negative and that's why you've seen the share price being relatively a non-performer on in pound terms and in rand terms you've got the double whammy of the rand having strengthened by 15 percent this year alone so it, it doesn't help things but if you look a little bit further than that um, i think you've got some good quality here mm. good quality for the long term mm, with the potential obviously for the rand pound rate perhaps to, sh to weaken in a little bit i would wait so I'm going to go not hot. I think it's something to look at in six months' time. Nick? I agree with Paul. I, I, I like it, um, but not in the short term, just because of the uncertainty with our foreign exchange. That plays so a huge deal in the not stock. Not hot, wait and see, mm -hmm. uh, being the operative term to put to Hammerson. Mm -hmm.